Hello, and welcome to part one of the Dental Practice Advisory Series. My name is Ken Harlan with Ozarks Capital Funding. Today's topic affects the cash flow of dental providers throughout the country. I have the privilege of speaking today with a true collections expert, Mr. Ron Preby, accounts receivable consultant with Green Flag Profit Recovery. Why don't you tell us about your background in the collections industry? Well, I've been in the industry for about 25 years, eight years with a check guarantee service, and then another 17 years with one of the largest collection agencies in the country. I am a licensed collection agency manager in Michigan, and I've personally helped over a 1,000 clients to recover their delinquent accounts. I know the temptation is to keep sending statements to non-paying customers month after month with the hope they'll eventually pay. How many unanswered account statements should be sent? Well, Kent, you're right. Uh, computers spit those statements out, and it's almost like they're demanding that you lick them, stick them, and stamp them and put them in the mail. But in reality, when you get a bill at home, typically you put it in a stack somewhere, in a desk drawer or in a finger file on the desk or maybe between the bread box and the kitchen wall. You plan to pay them, and like most of us, we get paid a couple times a month, so we'll sit down and pay those a couple times a month. I mean, if there's more month than there is money, somebody's going to get to stay in the desk drawer an extra pay period. The point is, if you sent me a second statement, I'm not likely to put you into the drawer twice because that might screw up my simple bill paying system, and I might pay you twice, and that's unacceptable. So after I confirm that the second one is uh, really just another statement from you and that I owe you money and I already knew I owed you money, I throw it away. And a third and fourth statement, I won't even need to open because I still know that I owe you money. So you're just wasting time and postage and paper and um, your staff uh, to send out statements after the second one. Why two then? Well, just in case one gets lost in the mail. But, Kent, you know I'm getting to be a pretty old guy. And, you know, somehow my bills never get lost in the mail. So I would imagine sometimes, too, if, if you keep sending them out month after month, that would tend to irritate the, you know, irritate the debtor and maybe they – which is even further back in the payment schedule. Well, that's possible. I had one old boy tell me that I was in the stack and that's as good as it was going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he gets to the point, huh? In the event that there hasn't been payment after these two statements have been sent, eventually collection calls will have to be made. Should office staff make those calls to patients? Now, collection agencies, as you know, make a lot of phone calls. But I can tell you that our get-through ratio, actually getting through to somebody that we can really talk with, not a voicemail or an answering machine, we get through about 15% of the time. Now, let's say that your staff is more successful at getting through to the uh, proper person. That means if they get through 20% of the time, 80% of the time that they're trying, they're being non-productive. Now, my guess is you probably still pay them. You don't have them punch out to make those calls. So now what I'm saying, Kent, is you're paying them to be non-productive 80% of the time. You know, with voicemail, caller ID, and answering machines, uh, the telephone has become a terrible collection tool. Wouldn't it be more effective if somehow you could motivate that debtor to contact you? You know, that's the aim of a good collection system in my mind.